Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to Wembley Stadium for this media conference to confirm the squad for the forthcoming internationals here at Wembley against Brazil and Belgium, which with the latter game being an Alzheimer's Society International. Uh, joined by Gareth Southgate and we'll get straight underway with Rob Dorset from Sky Sports News. Hi Gareth, good to see you. And you? Um, you picked pretty much the two toughest opponents you could pick for these two friendlies in uh, Brazil and, and Belgium. And I guess you had in mind for that, you wanted to pick you're probably strongest 11 to face them but you've got a lot of injury problems mm. toughest you've ever faced I think since you've been England manager so with that in mind how difficult has this squad been to, to select? Um, well it's always difficult of course um, there's definitely we seem to the last few weekends have lost two three players every weekend so um, we're inheriting all of the issues that are uh, apparent at some clubs at the moment so but completely out of our control um, and we have to adjust and adapt and uh, make the best decisions possible once you're in that situation and of course it gives opportunities for other people to come in and um, stake a claim so um, we're, we're always looking at the positive side of that really. I think Alex is going to ask you about Jared Brathwaite because he knows him very well, which is a heck of a day for him. Mm. I want to ask you about Calvin Phillips, who, who misses out in this squad. You've been very supportive to him for a long period of time now, um, picking him when he wasn't really playing for Manchester City at all, giving him game time. <laughs> um, he's not in this squad, but a significant one, the last squad you named before you have to pick your Euros squad. Mm. Is it going to be a tall order for him now to force his way back in, in time for the Euros? Well, I think he knows exactly what we think of him. I think we've shown that support. Um, a good version of him is an important player for us, and that's why we've supported him as we have. Um, we don't have many players of that profile, so um, unfortunately his form just hasn't been good enough. And um, I've, I've spoken to him about that. He understands. Um, he's got all the attributes to force his way back in, and we're really keen for him to do that. Um, but um, I said towards the you know the end of last year when we were picking the squads, it, it, if he had continued not to play at City, that was going to be a problem. Um, and he just needs to find that rhythm and confidence um, because there's an outstanding player in there, and I'm sure he'll find that. Hi Gareth, Gerard Brownfleet's in the squad for the first time, a player that's come through the pathway with the England under-21s, what's he done to impress you? Well he's played consistently well, um, his development, uh, I, we watched him as a backup centre half in the under-21 finals last year and if you'd said to me he would play as consistently well at Premier League level as he has then I'd have questioned that last summer. So great credit to him and to Sean that um, he's given a young centre half an opportunity. He's good with the ball, shows good composure, good mentality. Um, he's a left footer, which we don't have many left footed um, defenders. Um, so he's, he's in on merit and we're really keen to work with him and find out a bit more about him. And Cole Palmer, in the last camp he was called up from the under-21s due to injury, but he was playing well at Chelsea. He's, he's sustained that form. Has he surprised you that he's been able to continue playing so well for so long? Um, well, I don't know about surprised, but you, you can see and have always been able to see the quality he has. Um, Again, the time we spent with the under-21s last summer, just watching the training sessions, you could see what an outstanding technical finisher he was. Um, he, you know, some players get chances and you, you expect them to score because their te techniques and their feel for finishing is so strong. So he has that. He's shown great composure in some real pressure moments for his club. And um, he's adaptable. He can play in two or three different positions, I think, or maybe more. Um, so he's had an outstanding season. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, is, is in on, on merit, as, as everybody is. Gareth, Ivan Tony's back in the squad at the first time of asking, which I think speaks volumes about how much you think of him. Um, but I want to ask you about whether there's room for him when you're looking at your squad of 23 for the Euros. Is there room for both him and Ollie Watkins? Can you afford two strikers, as understood, as to Harry Kane? 
Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I genuinely don't know the answer to that. Um, that will depend on what sort of cover we need, what the profiles of the rest of the squad are, um, whether we need a couple of players that are adaptable can play in different positions that means you can take specialists in certain other positions um, I think we feel that Ivan is one of the contenders in that role so important to bring him back in and be able to work with us again he's shown straight away getting back into Brentford's team the quality and the impact that he can have equally Oli is having an outstanding season with Aston Villa and um, is uh, uh, is a player in excellent form and uh, I have to say Unai has done a brilliant job with Villa and he's a player that's benefited from, from that work. I want to ask you about Ben White because look, we know you've got significant injury problems at fullback. He, mm. he used to be a position you were blessed with and couldn't mm. fit everybody in. Now you don't seem to have any, or hardly any fit fullbacks available. Mm. Uh, and then you've got Ben White who's playing really well for the team that are leading the Premier League right now and he's still yeah. not getting his place. Is, mm. I know it's a difficult situation, but is he available for selection for England at the moment? No, look, it's absolutely the question you should ask because clearly on form, I can't sit here and say he, he doesn't deserve to be in. Um, we, John McDermott, had a call from Edu last week to say that Ben didn't want to be considered um, for England squads at this time. Um, for me, that's a great shame. Um, he's a player I really like. He's a player that we took to a Euros when he was at Brighton, a player that we took to the World Cup. Um, I spoke to him post Qatar because um, I was keen to pick him, and there was clearly um, reticence from on his side. I don't, I don't know fully why that is, um, but I have to respect that. I want to leave the door open for him because he's a good player, and I think he's a player that can make a difference for England. Um, but he's not available to us, um, and so the only other thing I would say is there is no um, issue between us at all. Um, and also should say there's, there's never any issue with Steve Holland because that has been sort of mentioned in articles and I don't like that. You know, I'm, I can, people can talk about me and say th I have to accept that things get said and are false about me and for whatever reason in this role you have to almost stomach that. Uh, but I'm not prepared for that to happen uh, for a key member of my coaching team um, because that is not the reason that um, uh, Ben is uh, unavailable for selection. Just to follow up on that, Gareth, if he was to make himself available, is, there, is the door closed? Is it still open for him to make the Euros? No, I 100% uh, just said, you know, I, I want that door wide open. Um, he, would, he would be in this squad, um, but he's not available to us, and so I have to focus on those that can help us. Joe Gomez is back in the England squad for the first time in mm. four years and with the smaller number being able to take to the Euros is someone having someone who so versatile key going into the tournament? Well firstly it's great to see him playing regularly at Liverpool it's obviously been a couple of years since he's done that um, and he's such a lovely boy I've known him since the whew, under 17s when they won in Malta um, when he was at Charlton so um, we've always had great faith in Joe. Um, looks like we're going to be thrown out here. I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> uh, I should have a Roy Keane moment at this stage, <laughs> but I won't. Um, so yeah, no, we love working with Joe. We're delighted to see him back playing. He is versatile. Um, he's in very good form at this moment in time, and we, we look forward to seeing him next week. And in previous eras of England squads, there's always been one position that's been trickier to fill than others. Is, is left back one in this era of England team? I think we've got a few, really. You know, I've said for a long time in some positions we have a lot of depth, and in others we, we are very short of depth. Um, left back is clearly one. We're hopeful that Ben um, comes through this week uh, with, with Chelsea. He obviously missed the last game. Um, and we have other players that might be able to adjust and play that role, Joe being one. Um, but, um, yeah, as I say, it, it, it's an area where Luke being out is, uh, is a big blow. 
And if I could just ask you a question uh, away from the pitch. There's a number of EFL or players who have been in the EFL in this England squad. And the, the Premier League and the clubs in the EFL haven't been able to agree a financial deal. Do you think that's a bit of a shame that they haven't been able to? I, I don't know the details. Um, clearly, um, as you said, lots of players start in the EFL, have loans in the EFL. So it's... Uh, a great part of our football pyramid, um, but equally, I don't know what's being asked or um, or the or the detail around that uh, debate. Gareth, while you're on the subject of injuries, and you say Ben Chilwell, you'll see how he gets on. I think it's similar for Harry Maguire, isn't it? That he may or may not mm. play for Manchester United this weekend. So, how are they, as far as you're aware? And, mm. and you, what are your backup plans if, if they're not fit? Well, both are um, back into training. Um, so we, we just have to see how that goes through the week. Um, we, we obviously have contingency plans in every uh, area of the pitch. Some of those would be with the under-21s. You know, there are some players in the under-21s who, some young players who are doing exceptionally well, especially in midfield, like Sir Kobe Mainu, um, like Sir Harvey Elliott. Um, Rico was with us last time. Uh, Archie Gray at Leeds is doing very, very well, I have to say. Um, so there are a number of players in that group that we could move in. That will obviously mess up what Cars is trying to do with his squad. But um, um, it, it's obviously most important that we have the, the depth with the seniors first. You mentioned Kobe Mainu there. Is, is it right that, he's, that you don't think he's quite ready to make that step up into the senior squad and he's probably going to be with the 21s? Um, well, I think that he's doing brilliantly for a young player and we're never um, uh, slow to put a young player into the seniors, but he's only had a handful of games and you have to be very careful development-wise in making those decisions at the right time. So we think ideally we should allow him that um, that space to develop at his own speed um, you know, he's not at the point in terms of number of games or that Jude or Bukayo were when they came in for the first time. Um, but I repeat, he's doing really well for a young player. He's a good footballer, you can see that. Um, and uh, he's getting some fabulous experience with Manchester United at the moment and, and looks a really good character. Last one from me, I wanted to ask about Jordan Henderson, another player that you've offered a lot of support to when he's had some mm -hmm. difficult times, maybe in, in, in recently. Um, did you speak to him when he made that move? Did he call you to talk about his move from Saudi Arabian Pro League to, to Ajax? Um, and Because the understanding I have is that he, he was desperate to make sure he was playing at a level that could keep him in your thoughts. It, it, we did speak, yeah. Um, I'm obviously not going to divulge that conversation, but um, yeah, it's good to see him playing back in a league that's probably easier to assess. And of course, European football, he had the, the game against... Villa last week as well, which is um, easier for us to see the level he's operating at. So um, he's had a big influence on Ajax since he's been there. I know they're very, very happy with him. Um, we know what he brings. We know um, the leadership he brings. Uh, you saw in the game last week, the, un the game understanding that um, we have to have some balance with all of the attacking players that we've got. And... Um, uh, Hendo is, is somebody that brings a lot to the team. Last one from me, Gav. Uh, Anthony Gordon, I know you mentioned him in the, in the last international camp. He's mm. named for the first time in, in the senior squad. What has he, he done to grab your attention this time around? Well, consistently good performances. Um, it, it, he was very close in November, as we said at the time. Uh, he's continued his form. Um, he's scoring. Uh, his work for the team is excellent he competes um, which is important um, so I really like his attitude again he's another one that we watched closely with the under 21s where he fulfilled a different role as a sort of a false nine but did that really well um, so yeah he, he's had a, a, a very good um, very good season has got goals against some of the big teams as well which uh, for us is, is also very interesting to see. Thanks Alex and Rob uh, James Ollie from ESPN next Hi Gareth um, 
When you've worked so hard to create such a positive culture and get players wanting to play for England again, it's sort of in that context how disappointing is Ben White's decision? No, I have to respect it. Look, he's not the first player that um, at certain times hasn't wanted to be available for selection. Um, so I've always tried to protect those players um, because I always want the door to be left open, even though lots of those occasions I'm the one that gets it in the neck for not picking them and people don't know the reasons. But sometimes as a leader, you have to take the flack for others and, and allow them to uh, time to come through. And sometimes we've had young players that haven't felt comfortable coming away with England when I was with the under-21s and then as they get older they are more comfortable with it so there can be all sorts of reasons for that as I said I think we, sh we should respect that um, I repeat he's clearly playing very well and has been for a long time um, but he's not available to me You say you've had other players in the same situation I mean, how much of a because I think you've talked about this before so how much of a problem has it been for you? Well, we, we always have to find a different solution. So, you know, um, the very first squad I picked, I had a player call and said that, that uh, not, no, thanks, but no. And uh, you just have to move on. So um, um, that, that's the reality of the job. There are lots of things that are outside of your control. You've not always able to share the detail of those things, but that's, that's the way it has to be. I understand, on the one hand, why you'd want to leave the door open for him for the Euros, but... On the other, does it not potentially send a bit of a mixed message to some of the other players that you might have a player who maybe just can't play or doesn't fancy it right now, but might say, come June, pick me? Well, clearly, clearly to come in for June now would be difficult because others are going to have been in the squads and playing regularly. So whenever you have a situation like that, you've always got to, uh, uh, to assess... Um, those who have been on the journey all the way through um, and we've done that over the years with, with their various different situations Thanks James uh, but Next we've got a question from Iman from BCOMS just towards the back there Thanks Grace Hello, hope you're well. Um, I was wondering, are you paying a tribute for Terry Venables and are there any words that you'd like to say about Terry too? Yeah, uh, yes we are. Um, I know the FA have some plans around the game and definitely to acknowledge Terry and, um, and I know we've also invited Sven to one of the games. We, we don't know yet whether he can come but um, we're hoping that will happen as well. Um, yeah, Terry was a huge influence on me um, he was a very he would fit in today's game as a coach you know a lot of the things he did with us um, for example from a personal level I was a centre back that had played in midfield and he had me moving into midfield to mark or moving into midfield with the ball so tactical things that we see now that he was doing then um, very flexible in his formations. Um, we played a back four, a back three, a uh, four, three, two, one, a uh, four, three, three. Um, great man manager um, and just a really good human being who loved his life and lived life to the full. So I have very fond memories of him. I know all of the players that played for him have fond memories of him. Um, you know, he was brilliant with the big players and the big players have to be handled a little bit differently to everybody else um, but he managed that but he he handled the smallest player which I was when I first joined the squad um, and made them feel as special as the big players yeah, we'll take one more from that read okay, uh, two, two prong but very quick um, so with, uh, with no Calvin in the squad does that open up an opportunity um, or does it, does it change your perspective as far as uh, Jude Bellingham is concerned and the way that he might need to be deployed because Calvin's not there as an option uh, and also uh, how much are you asking the fans to, uh, to look at these two matches the, the quality of the opposition but also the fact there's a bit of experimenting going to be taking place and maybe it's more about the experiment rather than the result in these games well, um, in terms of Jude, clearly he's playing mainly as a false nine for Madrid. So we've got to balance um, where he's having a lot of success with 
may be looking at something a little bit different as well. Um, and you're right, why did we choose these games? Because if we're going to look at players, we need to see them against the very best. Otherwise, they could play well, but we wouldn't really know uh, the next step up. And we wouldn't be able to do that in May or June. So um, we took the best games we could. We're ranked third in the world, they're fourth and fifth. Um, you couldn't have a better test. I think the ticket sales suggest that that's been popular. Um, of course, with England, we have to experiment, play young players, play well, win, do all of those things. But with that, we're happy with that. That's not a problem. Um, we want to try and achieve all of those things. But definitely for us, there are lots of learnings that are really important for us ahead of the summer that are one of the priorities. Okay, we'll conclude it there. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank you.